Hi! This week we will focus on the radio interface of LTE. We will see how information is transmitted by radio between the inode Bs and the UEs. The physics of the transmission induces constraints that we have to handle. We also need to share the bandwidth between users of the same cell and to interface with the core network. To manage all that, the radio interface of LTE is structured into several layers. Each video of this week will present one of these layers. Let's start with the first one, the physical layer. The goal of this layer is to transfer binary messages between two points, namely an inode B and a UE. For that, LTE uses modulation and error correction techniques. We will explain these notions. What is the modulation? As you know, radio relies on electromagnetic waves to transmit information. Waves can travel a long distance, but they are subject to disturbance. For example, their amplitude can be modified, they can be subject to delays, or even to noise. But as long as these disturbances remain limited, the receiver can detect that something has been sent. Modulation is a transmission technique that consists of using a high frequency bearer to transmit a message. To do so, we modify the bearer, we say we modulate it according to the information contained in the message to transmit. If the receiver is able to recognize this modification, then it can retrieve the message. LTE can use several kinds of modulations. We will look at two of them to understand their differences and when to use each one. In LTE, the simplest modulation is binary phase shift keying, or BPSK. As its name indicates, it operates on the phase of the bureau. To transmit a zero, we don't modify the signal. But to transmit a one, we modify the phase by a factor of pi, which in our case is the same as taking the opposite of the signal. This plot represents the modulated signal transmitting the information 0, 1, 1, 0. You can see that the phase is modified each time the information changes and that it remains constant if the information does not change. This graphic is a representation of the states that the modulated signal can take. On this circle, the modulus represents the amplitude and the argument represents the phase. But we could have more than two phase states. This is what QPSK does. QPSK stands for Quaternary Phase Shift Keying. It enables four phase states. So we can transmit two bits at a time. For example, we can take the convention that a phase of pi by two is used to transmit the couple of bits zero, zero. A phase of 3 pi by 2 corresponds to 0, 1, and so on. 5 pi by 2 means 1, 1, and 7 pi by 2 means 1, 0. This notion is important. That's why we gave it a name. We call a symbol the period of time during which the information transmitted remains constant. As you can see, in QPSK, we can transmit two bits per symbol whereas in BPSK, we only transmit a single bit per symbol. So QPSK can transmit twice as much information as BPSK. It means that the data rate of QPSK is twice the one of BPSK. But there's no such thing as a free meal, so there's necessarily a trade-off. Looking at these graphics, we see that in QPSK, the states are closer from each other than in BPSK. And when disturbance occurs, 
the states will drift from their original position. And if the disturbances are really important, the states will even overlap and the receiver will not retrieve the correct information. At this point, the thing to remember is that to use an efficient modulation, we need a good quality channel. In other words, we always have to compromise between transmission speed and zero rate. But keep in mind that channel conditions are changing continuously. For that reason, LTE has to adapt the modulation in real time. Now, let's talk about heroes. Heroes are quite frequent in radio. For that, modern systems like LTE make use of error correction. This is based on mathematical encoding, which is outside the scope of this course. But simply put, the idea is to add redundant information when sending to increase the chance of reconstructing the message upon reception. For example, this message has to be well understood. But an error can occur, and I don't want that. So I will repeat it three times. So the receiver can identify where the error is and correct it. It does not always work. It uses up bandwidth, but it is still quite effective. We call the ratio of the useful information over the total transmitted information coding rate. In LTE, this can vary between one sub for an extensive correction to almost one for nearly no correction. Up to now, we have seen that depending on the propagation conditions, LTE can use different modulations and different coding rates. The combination of a given modulation with a given coding rate is called modulation coding scheme, or in short, NCS. Since Channel conditions are changing continuously and independently for each mobile. LTE has to adapt the MCS of each mobile in real time. What are the important points of this lesson? First, to use efficient modulation, we need good propagation conditions. Otherwise, we have to switch to a more robust modulation. But in this case, the throughput will be lower we can also modify the coding rate. Secondly, LTE continuously adapts this parameter for each terminal in real time. Mm -hmm.